Hi folks, we're going to throw our hat in the ring on machining this large A for the Autodesk Cam Challenge. And I thought, you know what, this makes a great example of a beginner's guide to some 3D toolpaths and surfacing in Fusion. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Fusion Friday. So what I ended up with was splitting this surface area here into three different parallel toolpaths. A main parallel toolpath for the center area and then a separate one for each side. But let's rewind and start from the scratch to see how I got here. Duplicate my setup. We're going to call this one just a basic parallel. Delete the existing guys. 3D parallel. One of the great things if you read this pop-up is it emphasizes that parallel Finishing passes are best suited for shallow areas. Shallow meaning they're not really steep, and that's exactly how I would describe the area of this A that we want to surface. Use a half inch ball end mill. And the next thing I need to do is select my area. Now this happens to be a good example of something that's a little bit tricky because it's not super easy to pick the area I want. So the trick will be to start with something I'll click this right here. And now I'm gonna click on that again with my left mouse, let up. And this box pops up right here. And right now I'm able to then reselect the area by just hovering my mouse over the new geometry. I think we're gonna to need to go all the way out here for this to work. And the reason is that I can't really easily select uh, just this part right here because I don't have a natural contour to close that off that section. So I'm gonna click here once and then really important to click that green plus area to accept the current contour selection. Click OK, let's just see what we've got. Okay, good news is I've got a parallel toolpath. It's definitely going some places that I don't want it to, so let's start cleaning it up. Edit, and under geometry, I'm gonna check contact point boundary. Card here to Rob Lockwood's video. He does an excellent job explaining what it is, but if you're in the too long, didn't read crowd, Checking it is generally a good idea, and it really relates to just having the tool machine only what it needs to uh, and properly containing the 3D tool path. So now we're starting to get what looks like a real surfacing tool path. What I don't like about it is the parallel tool path is going the wrong way. And if we look at the orientation of our x-axis, it's following that. And sure enough, under edit, passes, we can see the pass direction is zero degrees. That degrees is relative to that x-axis. Hit I on our keyboard. Let's click this edge here that is in line with our x-axis and then hold down the control key and click this edge right here. And you'll see we get this angle. If I click once, it copies it to the clipboard. And let's paste that angle into our parallel toolpath. And that's gonna change the way that parallel toolpath runs, but not correctly. So unfortunately I did it 90 degrees offset. So all we've gotta do take that number we pasted and say 90 plus that number. And now we should get a parallel toolpath that runs along the plane I want. Perfect. Now we're starting to look better. Notice I haven't worried yet about decreasing the step over size. We can do that later, but that's really just a preference thing in terms of the surface finish we're looking at. And I don't need to bog down my computer or calculation time with that right now when I'm really just trying to dial in the toolpath. One last change on this part is smoothing card here to the video that we did where we dive deeper into what smoothing is but it's something you're going to want to turn on for a part like this and i'll set it to one thousandth of an inch if we compare the toolpath before smoothing and after smoothing it looks identical the difference is under simulate with show points checked you can see how many black points or dots we have without smoothing turned on compare that to when we have smoothing turned on and you can see how many lines of code we've reduced, but more importantly, how much smoother the machine's motion profile is going to be. So that gives us a really basic example of a parallel. Uh, what I don't like about that is I don't wanna run this same parallel direction on the two fillets right here. It's not gonna give us the best toolpath, uh, even if we were to decrease the step over. So let's recreate uh, how we actually did this. We can keep our existing parallel I'm just gonna update the geometry selection to be the center section here. I'll click once on this section, click again, let up, and I can re-update that selection to here. I, there we go. 
One thing I don't like is this would be starting at the top of our part uh, and working its way down. I would rather start at the low spot and work our way up, which will force the tool to use a better area. You'll get better surface finish, better surface footage by using the side of the tool and not the tip. So we can switch that by editing the pass direction again. I want to take 90 degrees minus that, and that will flip it to a negative number and cause it to start, in this case, down at the bottom, which is perfect. Depending on how much material you have roughed away before you start this, I want to control where it transitions from a yellow rapid to a green lead-in move. I don't want a rapid plunge into existing material. We can edit that in the safe distance value right here. Let's go something pretty extreme. We'll bump it up to 0.3 inches just to make sure we don't have a bad linking move and, and, and again, run that cutter into that material. And if you're ever not sure what's going on, go to simulate info and just left click and drag your mouse through and you can see the feed rate right here is a rapid. It's red because we it thinks the stock is still there because I haven't simulated the prior ops yet. But here when we switch the green, you can see it's a lead in feed rate, what that feed rate is. And then we can see it switches to a cutting feed rate. And again, you get really good uh, granular info and detail that can help you prove out some code. We can duplicate our parallel and use that for this side fillet here. We're gonna update the selection to that. Click OK, and let's see what we get. Okay, so pass direction is wrong. This should be okay to use back at zero degrees because it should be in the same line as our x-axis. And now we'll need to reduce the step over to make, have this look correct. We'll say 50 thou. Okay, so not bad. The first thing that I want to get rid of is this kind of this rogue toolpath right here. And that's caused by the fusion tolerance. Again, watch the video that Rob Block would put out as well as our video on smoothing and tolerancing. But basically, this four ten thousandths of an inch tolerance makes fusion think it's able to do a little bit more work here than it should. And we fix that by going to geometry and under additional offset, we paste that in, except we make it a negative and we add just a small amount to it and that shrinks the work area in just a hair and fixes that pretty quickly. Now the last big thing I want to fix on this toolpath is I'd really rather it not lead in and out within the confines of this sketch. So the trick is patch. Card here to the videos we've done on patch where you can walk through various different examples. Switch into patch environment. Create. Offset. And uncheck chain selection. Pick this guy right here, click OK. And I'm going to turn off my A just so I can see the patch individually. Modify, extend. And this one extends kind of funny. It looks like it's going a different direction. It's really optical illusion. We'll take a look. We'll reorient it and you'll see. I'm going to extend both sides of this though. If you turn the A back on, you can see what we've done is we've just given a little bit of additional surface area or runway. And sure enough, that should work just fine. It looks quite peculiar, but I believe that's going to work for the task at hand. So now what we've got to do, head back into cam, take our parallel toolpath, edit geometry. Let's change the machining boundary. We're going to delete the existing chain, and we're instead going to use our patch surface like so. Click OK. I think we'll probably see a problem with this, though. It's going to fall over the edges. The way to fix that will be to go to edit, geometry, and we're gonna actually add that patched surface into the model. So it thinks that's now part of the model, it has to obey it, it can't violate our machine through it. And we've got a much better way of really leading in and out, sort of off the part, but keeping those movements in line with this surface. You do the exact same thing over here. We'll throw our version of the A up on the NYC CNC site. Maybe we'll wait until after our entry goes live on the uh, Fusion Cam Challenge. But folks, hope that breaks down some of the questions and barriers. Again, patch is really one of the keys to understanding how to contain toolpaths in 3D servicing. We've got a bunch of other good videos on NYC CNC to learn all things Fusion 360 and manufacturing entrepreneurship. Take care, folks. See you next Friday.